Alrighty, folks, let's get into a little bit of crunchiness right now. Uh, we're going to now, again, find our, our polynomials given some zeros, but now we're going to be dealing with some complex numbers. Um, and so, and even more specifically with conjugate numbers specifically. So um, I'll explain what this conjugate zero theorem is once we get into this problem right here. A lot of times it's just good just to jump into an example then and just explain the theorem within the example then then get all abstract on you. Hey, so check it out. Uh, so we want to find a polynomial f of x of the least possible degree. So we're not trying to make extra degrees in here. So just the least possible degree having only real coefficients and they give us our zeros right here. Okay, so the, the, they give us a zero of four so we know that one of the zeros is 4, and they also tell us that one of the other zeros is 3 plus 2i. Okay, and so call this a, a, um, a complex number where there's a real value and then the, the complex number. And so um, the, the thing is that the, these conjugates or these complex numbers always come in pairs. So you're never going to see 3 plus 2i unless you see it's brother or sister, I guess you could say, but it's gonna be three minus two i. They always come in pairs here, so we don't wanna be tricked here when they just give us three plus two i. So really we have three zeros. And so just like we did in the last example, we wanna turn these into linear factors and then multiply them all out. Um, it does get a little hairy because of our, our imaginary numbers right here, but let's go ahead and deal with that first and then we'll deal with the four. So let's turn these into factors, right? Just like if I turn x equals four into a factor, that's x minus four, right? So that's a factor. So here, the same thing, we're gonna do this. x minus three plus two i. And I use a bracket to distinguish the two different groupings. So this is one grouping, but it's x minus the quantity three plus i or three plus two i. And then the other one is x minus three minus two i. Okay, so I know it's starting to get really hairy here, but this is how we do it here. So let's go ahead and distribute the negative sign. So we have a, a negative times three is negative three, negative times two i is a uh, negative two i. Okay. Okay, so I simplified this grouping right here to the same thing over here, x minus three plus two i. All right, uh, but now what I wanna do is I wanna uh, do a little tricky business right here and I wanna regroup these again and there's a purpose behind that. And if you're gonna see right here, what I wanna do is I'll do this in a different color here. I'm gonna just put parentheses around the first two and parentheses around the first two. And you can do that in mathematics. You can put parentheses around any two things. Um, we're just gonna make that its own little grouping there. And the reason why I, I did this is because I want you to, to notice a pattern that um, emerges when, when you do that. If we did a minus b times the quantity a plus b, that is simply a squared minus b squared. You just kind of look at this. See, this, see this would be our a, and this would be our, our b. So it's a minus b times a plus b. See, just like this right here. So I show that to you to say, okay, how are we gonna multiply this big mess? You just simply square a minus and then square b. That's how you really multiply all this. Um, and so that's what we're gonna proceed to do right now, okay? So our, our a term is x minus three, so I'm gonna square that, minus, and I'm gonna square my b term, which is just a two i squared, okay? So basically, this is all we have to do to simplify this product right here. So this just becomes x squared minus six x uh, plus nine, so that's what this is right here, minus uh, two squared is four, and then i squared is a negative one. So I square two and I square I, I get negative one. So if I simplify all this, I would get x squared minus six x nine plus four. 
I think that's what I got. Is that what I... Hold on here, let's see. Hold on real quick here. Okay, great, so we'll keep um, going on here. So this will be nine plus uh, four. So that'll be our 13 right there, okay. Sweet, so uh, that all of that work right there, we just multiplied out these two factors right here, these two complex uh, factors. But we can't forget about our, our um, x minus four, so I'm gonna drop that guy down, um, x minus four. And uh, basically, once we multiply that through, then we'll have our uh, factor there, okay? So that's what we're gonna um, do right now. So x times x squared is x cubed. x times negative 6x is negative 6x squared. x times 13 is a positive 13. And then we do negative 4 times x um, is negative 4x squared. Negative 4 times negative 6 is a uh, positive 24x. So maybe I'll just put that right over here. And then uh, we'll do um, four negative four times uh, thirteen. What's that going to give us? About forty-eight. All right, so that's a negative forty-eight. Oh, you know what? Hold on. Uh, X times th thirteen is thirteen x. Okay, so I was wondering. Line that should actually go right there. All right, great. So let me just move that over. All right, um, and then we can go ahead and just combine like terms in. So x cubed minus 10x squared uh, plus uh, 37x minus uh, 48. So let's just make sure that's all correct there. Um, something's not, what, what happened here? Real quick, oh, the 48 should be actually be uh, 52. I didn't, I didn't multiply that correctly there, so. Let's go ahead and check that guy. So minus uh, 52, minus 52. Great, so, and again, uh, if this is just one possible answer, right? I mean, there are many different forms that you can get to get the least po uh, possible polynomial, but this is just one of them right here.